as the topic says here, um, Zero Seven Shake, um, the girl that's um, famous who, for the kind of breakout feature on Pusha T's an album on the track called Santeria, has uh, dropped her longtime manager and Cody, um, Yes Jules, which has been interesting, right? Because um, I didn't know this. I think uh, somebody um, just kind of threw out a question on Twitter and, she, and Yes Jules fortunately kind of answered and kind of broke it down into this tweet, which I'll read here. I've got it here on the screen if you guys can check it out. Uh, and the screen and the, the tweet from Yes Jaws reads the following Apparently I was only needed until she hit the big leagues She fired me as soon as she got on Nas's album People change Or maybe she was never who I thought she was in the first place One valuable lesson has been learned I can't really trust nobody Ironic isn't it? So I guess it's, it's, it's ironic because you know Yes Jaws has had a bit of a um, A bit of a shaky time in hip hop right Even though she does a lot more good than bad Maybe maybe doesn't do any bad to be completely honest Um if you don't know who Yes George is, he's kind of like a, a bit of a hip hop personality and also a bit of a just an all round crave egg, right? She's done loads of events in Miami where she's kind of originally from, I'm assuming. Um, she's supported loads of underground artists. She does the whole like um, I forgot what the playlist is called on SoundCloud. That was very, very, that was very well known. That kind of picked up from there, and then from there she kind of uh, spinned off and made this kind of agency that she's got. Uh, the one a, is it one a.m. thing that she's got the agency. I'm not sure what the name was. Um, she's kind of put, uh, really pushed the whole idea of ne never not working, kind of consistently hustling. Loads of stuff about entrepreneurship. Really, really encouraging young females in the industry to kind of get at it and really start chasing their dreams. So, a kind of a really good egg in general. She's always in the mix when it comes to like putting events on with underground artists. Um, and she's just always out there and about there. But you know, she's had loads of kind of um controversial um times happened in her career too from that tweet that she retweeted with a t-shirt with the n-word on it um the sex tape that leaked um loads of random shit that happened right but she's been fortunate enough to kind of ride through that storm which is kind of shown that usually when people ride through those kind of things i think it's an indication that they're a good person if you're a shitty person when those things happen to you usually the community at large takes that as an opportunity to kind of like counsel you and just kind of close the door and not let you come back in again but i think the fact that she's been able to uh, resurrect her career and she seems like she's on the up and up you know just following her twitter account is fucking tiring right she's always doing things i think i'm always you know i get a little bit i wonder how she feels about photo promotion because i always get a little bit cringy about promoting the stuff that i do but she's always constantly tweeting her shit retweeting that putting out this i'm there i'm there i'm here guest list is open send your email on there. i mean she's always telling you what she's doing so you can tell by her twitter feed that she's kind of you know she's active and she's taking part in the culture so people have kind of opened her up with, uh, with um, open arms but there is an idea of, of loyalty that comes in play when it's an artist right because i know having followed a lot of um comedians on podcasts and stuff they speak about it quite often about you know the fact that some of them speak um with a lot of um glee in their voice and a lot of admiration that they've had the same manager for 27 years let's say right and they but they believe in loyalty the fact that this person backed them when they were nobody they're not now going to even though they've had their differences they're not gonna they're not willing to turn around and fire that person because they wouldn't be what they're understanding they understand that they wouldn't be where they are now without that person and i get that but there is there is also such a thing as blind loyalty right when sometimes you just load somebody out of fault, right? We get that a lot. You have, you have that a lot with families, right? Where, unfortunately, you can't choose your family. And if you have a shitty family or you have people in your family that you don't like or who lie, steal, and chill, you feel as if you kind of always have to have their back. But it's a loyalty that kind of inevitably always hurts you because you're the one that's getting hurt and you're just stuck to them because, you know, you happen to share the same blood. But sometimes people take that as a lesson and, and usually sometimes they'll say, you know what, I'm not going to let that happen again. So in my actual real life, if I have the opportunity to dump somebody because they're not doing what I want them to do or they, or they haven't shown me um, a good face or I don't feel as if they're being loyal back to me, I'm going to ditch them for somebody else. Now, I don't know what the story goes with the whole Zero Seven Shake, um, Yes, Jaws thing. From reading between the lines or reading what uh, Zero Seven Shake, Zero Zero Seven Zero Shake's um, response on Twitter, it seemed as if like she's kind of arguing the point that um, they they kind of both riz at the same time. They kind of both kind of were prominent at the same time. You know, um, Yes, Jaws helped Zero Seven Shake to get where she needed to get to. The whole signing on Good Music was a good look. Like it was really amazing to see. How happy yes, Jules was that just some zero seven zero Shake finally got, or just something to say Shake. Shake finally got put on and was signed to good music. So they kind of both were at the same time, but it seemed as if yes, Jules also her workload increased too, right? Um, they got she's got collaboration with Puma that is kind of ongoing. I'm assuming she must have loads of clients signing on with her services, working consulting with different brands. Her kind of agency is popping up. She's hiring more people. So I'm assuming 
what Joseph Shaker's meaning is that, you know, she was getting busy and didn't necessarily have the time to dedicate her whole full resources to Shake. Because back in the day when it was probably just a few of them running around town trying to, you know, get themselves put on, she felt like she had all the attention, all the creative energy was kind of getting directed into her. And, you know, by their very nature, musicians especially, as probably more so than comedians, are quite selfish in that regard, right? They want to feel like they are the apple. Um, in the person's eye, right? Like they're that they're the pride. It's like that's why some people get put off with record labels, right? The whole idea is that you're gonna get lost in the mud, especially if you're assigned to a record label that has two or three breakout stars. You're gonna be like the third or fourth priority when it comes to rollouts and stuff. So you wanna kind of feel like you're always a priority. Sometimes, so maybe in that regard, you know, yes, George was too busy and straight just feel like you know what, you're not giving me attention I need. I'm gonna go somewhere else. Um, but you know, I don't know, man, how I feel about it because. I'm I'm of the feeling that if I if I was a shake and I did come up from nothing and I kind of have was given the kind of look or the recognition primarily based on my on my own talent. Don't get me wrong, right? I'm some kind of musician. I do the work, work, but a lot of the background stuff that I'm sure yes, Jude was involved in and you know um, meetings and this and that. You can't you can't discount that, right? And I'm sh and I'm kind of going back to the whole interview with Ben and Bobby Hundreds on High Beast Radio, right? It's kind of stressed to me the importance of partnerships and how important it is to kind of have somebody in your corner who handles the stuff that you can't handle, right? And how, and even though, because sometimes when you know what you know, or you've got your domain of expertise, you can sometimes discount the other bits because you think the success is just coming from what you do because you know what you're doing, right? You're designing shit, you're making shit, you're going from a sketch to a real iteration, but the actual idea of putting it into stores, of getting money in or being paid on time at the end of the month, that's something that is a skill that shouldn't be overlooked. And it's something that I've kind of learned the hard way when I used to do my nights to promote stuff, right? There wasn't a clear delineation when I was partnering up with my, with my ex-friend that, you know, who, what the roles were or who was responsible for what. And then eventually that kind of relationship deteriorated because it wasn't a clear line of communication. And I'm sure even though Zero Shake probably feels like she needs a change, that was probably the relationship that she had with Jess Jules, right? As great as she is artistically, as great as she is creatively, the idea that you had somebody in your corner who's doing all the businessy stuff, or all the kind of marketing stuff is super important, especially for somebody that's coming up, that's just like an underground artist, right? Someone that no one really knows about. That's amazing to have like effectively like uh, your own bespoke marketing agency working just for you. Um, you know, I, I've always said this, I think I mentioned it to my brother the other day who's start, starting to make some music. It's like, I'd, I'd much rather you not make sub, um, it's just my own opinion, I'd much rather he'd not make mediocre music and instead of concentrate his, his efforts on just lending his services for free to artists, especially underground UK rap artists, and just kind of help them with promotion, help them with making flyers, help them to get on these, because my brother's got a podcast, help them to get on these podcasts, um, help them with touring, help them making YouTube videos, um, whatever it may be, um, posting stuff on social media. That that would that, that would serve the culture of the community better because that's stuff that they are doing as well, but it's taken away from their artistry, right? They need someone to just kind of just, uh, okay, let me make the song and give it to my brother and they can just like, he's the one that's responsible for kind of like getting it out there. And I sometimes feel like, that's something that's lost on some people but again we don't know the inner workings i don't know what the actual inner workings are this relationship i don't know what kind of crumbled to it but i kind of would hope if that was me and i was in that, that position i would be loyal to a fault i think so just because i think like you know you can't buy that I, that kind of relationship especially coming from the mud of like you know be, dealing with have you know that whole idea of like you've been with each other performing in venues with like seven people and, and now you're all of a sudden you're performing on the stage uh, with Pusha T or you're on Jimmy Kimmel with Pusha T. That's amazing. That's a, that's something, that's that's a reward that you're never going to be able to, that's a, um, that's a joy you're never going to be able to share with anybody else. I remember Rocky mentioning it a few times about the whole, that's why he misses ASAP Yam so much because he was the only one that got the journey. He was there when they were just nothing, when they had to like share food and shit. Remember when they were sleeping on each other's couches so he's like, he's just upset that he's not here to see how successful, how big they are now, to see like the fruits of their labor, to see how much, to, to see that he was right, that they were always going to be successful. Um, yeah, that's the only thing that I'm, I'm kind of a bit dubious about. I don't know exactly what relationship is, I don't know what happened, but it's sad to kind of see that happening. I guess maybe kind of, you know, may, it might be for the best, you know, sometimes, you know, staying with somebody just because you're loyal and the relationship isn't where it should be might be a, an error as well in that regard, but I'd hope I'd be... I'd be uh, low to a fault. But I saw that news and I was a bit bummed out by it. But I guess, you know, maybe it's a lesson. Again, maybe as Jerry Jules says, it is a lesson learned for next time to kind of, you know, to know how to correct course for the future coming up. But again, I think for anyone out there who is contemplating starting a music career because you're seeing everyone making music, 
hold off on it. Do you know what I mean? Do what Yes Jules is doing. Get involved in the culture. Like, kind of move, be the mover and shaker behind the scenes. Sign people. Or not even sign, just help somebody out. Not even signing. Like, just be, just do the, just do the, the hustle thing. Offer your services for free. Like, hey, I'll write the copy for your um, album, um, your album notes, right? Um, I'll do the social media posting. I'll do the SEO stuff. I'll help you out with Facebook marketing. Um, like do that kind of stuff, like be of service to different artists and help the culture move forward. I think that's a better way to kind of get yourself involved instead of being that the, the person in front of the camera. And inevitably, if you do want to be in front of the camera and you happen to be an attractive girl like uh, Yes Jules, it can happen as well. You can be the, the behind the scene person and you can also be someone that's in front of the camera. That can also help, that can also work, but you could also just be the, the person behind the camera that no one really knows about. That's just like, you know I mean, pulling all the strings. That's also an important part of the story. <laughs>